Hello and welcome to another video commentary for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. Today we are going to cast a free for all replay. That means 1v1v1v1. Me, one me, one me, one. Everybody is playing for himself and everyone is your opponent. At the bottom left side of the map, we have the orange Isenga player Hydro. Top left, the blue Gonzo player Jet John. Top right, the green Rohan player Blue Eagle. And at the bottom right, the green Isenga player Amateur Hour. So two Isengards, one Gondor and one Rohan. And I like that because in free for all matches, the evil factions are the MVPs. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because evil factions have no protection. They have no vaults, right? And for that reason, we will see lots of action without the need of siege weapons like trebuchet, ants or catapults. Two furnaces coming up for the Isengard player. He's actually saving for lures instantly. This Isengard player, in my opinion, is making a better call by building the third furnace. This way, your, you know, your loots might be a little bit delayed, but it's fine. You will have just much, much greater eco. So the orange Isengard player is trying to creep the goblin layer. In the meantime, the Rohan player is moving on with a couple of peasants. And, but he's not recruiting any additional peasant. It looks like he wants to also recruit a hero as soon as possible. And that's affordable in free for all matches because this is nothing like 1v1 or 2v2. Here you have a bit more time since everybody has at least one settlement he can control throughout the entire game. This one, for example, for Isengard player, all he needs to do is build one single tower, and this one is potentially not going to be taken down all game long. So that means you will have a great amount of resource income regardless what faction you are facing against. And it looks like this Urukai were actually able to steal the creep. They are almost level 2. Warchan is now going to be used from the green Isengard player, and he will also be able to last hit this settlement, this creep, now he has a level 2 Urukai. Now he has a couple of options. As for example, combining this Urukai with a crossbow man for getting a level 2 crossbow man Urukai combination on the field. Which can be very impactful. And I believe he will try to save them. Which is pretty nice. And we have Lourdes on the field from both the Isengard players at pretty much the same time. This Isengard is gonna try to reclaim the settlement as he lost this. To the soldiers of Gondor. And Gondor now moving on to the war clan with the hobbits, Peregrine Duke, and two soldiers. He's going to use the human wood or elven wood rather. Uh, why? Because there is nobody that can counter that. Remember, Rohan will need two power points to unlock the elven wood after picking the draft, and Isengard will even need three power points. So it means, long story short, nobody early on will be able to cover the elven wood from the Gondor player. And he has also Farami on the field. That's what I was trying to say early on. And we have even Eomir. You see, everybody is actually investing the money early on to re recruit one of the cheapest heroes from their faction. Faramir costs 1200, Eomir costs 1400, and Lourdes costs also 1200, just like Faramir. And by the way, of course, this is going to favor the Isengard players. Why? Because Lourdes is an anti hero. That means he has crippled with level 1, and the second he gets to level 3, he will also become an anti hero killer. Because with the Carnage, he can just cripple them, use the sword, use Carnage, get inside the genes and take them out. Faramir has not. No chance at all. Just like Eomir. Boromir will also die. Pretty much every hero besides Gandalf and Aragorn will be killed from one single lord. This Faramir is now level 4. Remember, level 5 is going to unlock his leadership, which is fear resistant for the nearby allied units, which is going to be absolutely useless in this matchup. And also, 50% increased armor. In the meantime, uh, Lourdes is getting more experience. He's almost level 4. The level 5 is a massive power spike for the Isengard hero Lourdes because that's going to unlock 60% damage leadership for the nearby allied units, which again, in battle for middle of 1, is able to stack with the Warchant. Nice, he was actually sniping down <laughs> the Hobbit Peregrine took. And this Eomir is trying to get to level 4, but Faramir got crippled down. Now, I will show you guys, Lourdes is getting... Inside the genes, using the sword. Now he can use Carnage for additional 100% damage leadership. And look at this now. What can men do against such a reckless seed? Level 5 unlocked just like that. Eomir has to be careful. You cannot fight him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Eomir is more like a sportive hero rather than being a fighter hero, just like Lourdes. Lourdes is everything what you need, actually, you know? Lourdes gives you sport with the leadership, with the pillage later on to get money for killing enemy units. He gives you... A great 1v1 potential because of the carnage. And he gives you the chance to cripple down the MVP unit or hero from the enemy faction. Which is awesome. Like, Lourdes is the most cost-efficient hero in the entire Battle for Middle-earth trilogy by far. 
which kind of makes sense in battle for middle of <laughs> i can't even talk sorry in battle for middle of one at least why because in bfme one you have only two available heroes saruman and lords so it kind of makes sense that you need to both be very efficient while a factional like, like rohan for example has plenty of heroes we have elvin theodine legolas who is also now being recruited by the way elmer aragorn and gimli so you have seven heroes in total we don't even count the mary yet so imagine that what is you know going on this gonzo player has to revive his faramir he's now finally building this table i'm assuming his plan you know his initial plan was to save for gandalf but after losing faramir he was not able to get the power points he needed remember he was starting with the elvin wood in order to get the gandalf the white power point from the spellbook however you need to first get heal and then save two more power points to unlock the Ganda of the White spell. You're Thank you so spell. much, Dra Dragonheart the One, for the follow on the Twitch channel. Appreciate that. The mill is going down. And this Lords is level 5. Now the Armory is coming up. We have also Saruman on the field for Amateur Hour, the Isengard player at the bottom right side. Again, the early minutes inside into the game are always kind of slow oh, because. Uh, the focus is always on um, the creeps like goblin layer work layer just to get the most of the map but after this couple of minutes into the early game we will hopefully start finally seeing some fiesta action um, speechcraft was used from saruman now these uruks are level three and looks like he doesn't want to recruit any units yet he want to make sure to purchase every single upgrade first from the armory before he wants to make the transition into the uruk pit to recruit some units again in this game you don't need to be fast and look at that they are, they are actually crippling each other but this lords i don't know why he's not getting inside the genes he's going to use carnage which is smart because besides making you deal more damage and hitting you know making you hit like a truck it also makes you more beefy more tanky but it's not gonna be enough. Oh, fireball! And Saruman is like, don't touch my lords, I'm telling you. Now he's sending this guy to fly away. <laughs> and of course, fireball from Saruman hurts. But this lords is on the hand. He wants to kill some Lumber Mill workers, you know what I'm saying? There is Legolas, and again, Legolas also has to be careful until he's level 7. When he's level 7, he's good to go. Because the amount of time lords will need to walk to Legolas after crippling him down will give most of the time Legolas the chance to kill him. Hawk Strike, especially Arrow Wind, will be able to one-shot every single hero in Battle for Middle of One if you are able to hit the one hero exclusively. It can hit and kill Gandalf through heal from 100 to 0. The Arrow Wind is just insane against heroes. This Lord is healing up. Armor, uh, look at that. Heavy Armor purchase, Fire Arrow purchase, Banner purchase. Now, the last upgrade is going to be the forge plates and then this isengard is getting almost ready to ramble <laughs> and i believe this isengard play on the left side is not gonna have the same amount of fun he has no saruman on the field yet he was going for the upgrades a bit earlier so saruman is of course very valuable when it comes to defend yourself but also with abilities like warm tongue which gives you the chance to steal and control the enemy units can be quite impactful in those epic battles we will see later on Eomer has been revived. He's almost level 4. Like one more kill and he will unlock the Horse Lord leadership. Which is a playstyle I like to play myself a lot with the Rohan faction. Because this gives you the chance to be mobile. Like Rohan is the only faction in, the, in Battle for Middle of One that has the chance to get archers on horses. And they will get insane amount of leadership from Eomer's Horse Lord with 60% more damage and 50% more combat experience. And again, this is even able to stack with Tyrion who gives you leadership with level 1. Legolas has been taken down, I missed that, sorry for that. And Saruman is now recruited from the orange Isengard player Hydro. So basically, every upgrade purchased from this Isengard player at the bottom right side, now he can start recruiting more and more units. He was using Speechcraft on this, he can use one more time eventually. When it comes to use Speechcraft, always use it on the Urukai and never on the Crossbow Man, because the amount of experience you will give to Crossbow Man is nothing in compared to the amount of uh, experience points you can give to the Uruke. I don't know why this is a thing, but it's a thing. Eomea is desperately trying to get the last a bit of the XP he's missing to get to level 4. Which might be happening now. Just kill the farm. One hit. And one more hit. Is he gonna die? Look, Eomea doesn't almost... Oh my goodness, that was really close. Now he's level 4, but again on the Elvin Wood from the Gondor player, you will have no leadership. 
as Elvin Wood and Tinted Land are able to nullify the effects of leadership in Battle for Middle of One at least. This Lord is still like over a level away from getting his leadership unlocked. That means in a clash between this Isengard player and this Isengard player, this Isengard player is going to win since he will have more leadership and leadership is the key to victory in battle for middle of one siege wargs coming up now for the ballistas no siege wargs for this isengard player just yet so now we will eventually see a fight urukai cross uh, more urukai and we have like three urukai and one single combo i don't know about that you know for a base rush it's just too late what is happening in the meantime oh my goodness legolas legolas is taking so much damage from the gondor knights farami is running for his life looks like Legolas is dancing around Rosy, trying to body block the Gondor Knights with the Rohirrim. But Eomir, in the meantime, has been taken down. Now, horses are going down right after that. And Legolas is going down right after that. One, two Gondor Knights to rule them all. Level six, by the way. And Legolas has been taken down. Eomir has been taken down. He also lost his Rohirrim. That's going to put Rohan so far behind. Because he now has to invest over two and a half thousand, like, right? Yeah, two and a half thousand plus just to revive his heroes, which could be invested into getting Fire Arrow or even a couple of Rohirrim matches. But, you know, mistakes were made. And again, those mistakes are always turning those games into Fiesta games, and I'm looking forward. This Isengard play is just trying to be ready, you know? He want to go for a for one push only, like one punch. You know, you guys know the enemy, right? One punch man. This guy doesn't want to play around. He want to go for a massive push, and look at that. We have three combos. Saruman leadership, Lourdes leadership, and Warchant. How many power points does he actually have? Yes, like almost one power point after the industry. That means he's like five and a half power point away from getting the Freezing Rain unlocked. Freezing Rain is a game winning ability as it's able to nullify all the leadership bonuses from every single enemy. It means every single of these three players beside this Isengard player will lose their leadership bonuses for three minutes. But Ballistas, they don't care about leadership. They will hit hard, but by far not as hard as catapults from Mordor or as trebuchet from Gondor. However, this Gondor player is also kinda out of the game. How actually he was getting a lot of power points. Yeah, yeah, true. He was killing Legolas, Eomir, Rohirrim. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Recruit the, the wizard Gandalf the Blue because he has now blue clothes. Look at that. On his legendary Shadow Fags. Oh, this is gonna be a fiesta fight. I'm telling you. Fireball has been used, we missed that from Saruman. He has only one single Ballista though, so this Isengard player shouldn't be afraid too much. Again, he has more leadership available. In this fight, it's very important about the micro and about the placement of your heroes. Your heroes are the most valuable units slash, you know, in this case heroes, you wanna control. That means you don't wanna step up against enemy Lords. So look at this, this Lords was just getting inside the range, now he's running it down. Now he wanna just... Oh, the Saruman was able to steal so many units. But Saruman has been taken down. That means the effect is gone now. The Saruman is going down right after as well. Saruman's, the wizards are gone. But Lord has been taken down. Now, this Lord is the focus. You see the focus from the players, guys. They are always trying to kill the heroes first. Indeed, both the players were able to kill both the heroes from each other. Lord and Saruman from both the players has been taken down. And I believe the orange Isengard player is kind of winning this. For now, it's hard to tell. But again, they are fighting in an area where this Isengard player will have an easier time to bring reinforcements. Now the Freezing Rain has been used from this Isengard player at the bottom right side. No, from that Isengard player. The other one has just unlocked, but has not used that. It's a mistake, by the way, to use the Freezing Rain right now. And I will tell you why. Because the army has no leadership right now. Why would you use it and waste it? It's not like he has leadership. He has lost, you know, the Vorchan is on cooldown. And he has lost the Lords and Saruman. That means using the Freezing Rain now for Hydro... The orange Isengard player was kind of wasted. But he wanna commit. He doesn't wanna go back. He has now a level 6 combo and a level 5 combo. And level advantage in battle for middle of 1 is massive. This Isengard player has to get some Ballistas, has to revive his Lords, has to revive his Saruman. Again, that's expensive also in terms of time. Because a lot of time has to be invested into getting those heroes back on the field. At the very same time, we have Gandalf on the field. He has not killed anything just yet. Because this Rohan is in a prison, he's in jail. He can't afford to leave the castle. He has like one single farm outside and that's the farm here. And he has even lost the farm right next to his base. Long story short, uh, he can't even afford to revive Legolas at this point. Who is by the way now level 5. And Legolas is not bad hero against other heroes. 
Also, when it comes to level up those Rohirrim archers later on with the train archers. But for now, he has only normal Rohirrim, but he desperately and definitely needs some Rohirrim archers. The Ballista has been taken down. Gandalf, look, Isengard calls for aid, and Gondor will answer. Master the Gondor Knights with Gandalf, who is now almost level 7, by the way. Beautiful trample. Gandalf is getting so much EXP from this, but especially those Gondor Knights, because they have right now 200% increased combat experience when Gandalf is nearby. That means those Gondor Knights, after killing like a couple of units, are 100%. 100% going to hit level 10. In the meantime, this Rohan is trying to recover a bit, and he should not be worried until Gondor is deciding to recruit some trebuchet, which is not being the case right now. But eventually he will need that if he wants to be able to finish off the Rohan player, with walls and a gate protecting him. And now we have the heroes back on the field. Lord's level 4 for Hydro, the orange Isengard player at the bottom left side. And Saruman is almost level 6. Levels don't matter that much for Saruman because he is having everything unlocked with level 5. And that's the level he is getting to the field anyway, anyway you know. And the leadership is kind of meh. Only 30% armor for a hero that costs you 5,000 is kind of really bad. Every hero has a better leadership than uh, Saruman. Even Faramir. I mean, maybe that sounds a bit rude, even Faramir, you know what I'm saying? But what can I what can I do? Even Faramir's daddy didn't like Faramir. Because he just couldn't show his quality. <laughs> and also here in this game, by the way, Faramir got recruited and got killed afterwards. So now we have a lot of archers on the field, by the way, from the Gondor player and the Rangers. Um, which are not the best units in the game when they have not enough leadership. That's the problem. And the base from the Isengard faction is so tanky with those level 3 furnaces, and every single one of these is acting and working like a tower. That means, without leadership, those archers slash rangers, they won't be able to do anything. Trust me on that one, you will see yourself now. Okay, looks like Amateur Hour, the Isengard at the bottom right side, was able to recover a little bit. He is now prepared for another push. Crossbowman, 3 cro uh, combo battalion, Lord's leadership, Saruman leadership, and Freezing Rain is going to be available. No, it's not going to be available. It's actually on cooldown. But the Freezing Rain from Hydro is going to be available eventually. We have now Ballistas. And again, Ballistas are not the best siege weapons, but good enough to distract the enemy units. They are also able to hit hard. But the problem with the Ballistas, in compared to the Catapults, is that they have not as much splash damage. While a Firestone upgraded Trebuchet, for example, can hit multiple units at the very same time while the Ballista is hitting way less units. It's still effective, don't get me wrong, but I prefer Trebuchet or the Mordor Catapults just way more. So it's a Siege War this now at this point. And look at this Rohan, he's waiting inside the camp, inside the castle. And Legolas is finally getting revived. He also needs Aragorn for damage leadership. But again, leadership, when there are two Isengards in a match, and they are using rain not at the same time but kind of like a little bit after each other that means you will have potentially never leadership available for the entire game level 7 combo he was actually able to save them that's pretty dope one more level is needed for the lords one more level so they are just building up now siege works ballistas playing it slow because they know one mistake oh wait a second okay what is going on legolas is shooting down gandalf but he has been used don't even waste your attack on Gondor Knights. Just attack Gandalf. What is this Legolas doing? Legolas, 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 Legolas has been taken down. The second, oh, beautiful land into the Visa Blast combination from the young Gandalf. Now, Eomer, Eomer, kill, spear throw, spear throw. Eomer got him. And look at that. Look at that. Glorious charge unlocked. What if yes, there was that, dude? Like, I could swear that Gondor is dominating this fight, but all of a sudden Gandalf dies, tilting his leadership uh, experience from that. Now, for I mean, this is a power spike like crazy, my dude. Like, that's when, you know, Vegeta was talking about the power level of Son Goku, and he was like, over 9,000. That's the power spike, over 9,000 for Rohan. The glorious charge is almost, and literally, actually almost, is making those Rohirrim and Rohirrim arches almost invincible. It means Gandalf can do anything against them when they are under the effect of the Glorious Charge. That's why it's a it's such a huge and amazing power spike for the Rohan faction if Theoden ever gets to level 4. And he is now level almost 6. He has also Elmer leadership. So, and basically, 
he just traded Legolas for Gandalf and that's worth it. For Rohan, by the way. Because Gandalf, if you can kill Gandalf, you can sacrifice anything you want. Okay, Speechcraft, the siege has begun. Now we will have a clash between Isengard and Isengard. Who now has the strength to face against the forces of Isengard and Isengard? <laughs> Ballista Wars. Okay, from downtown. Berserk is trying to get inside the jeans, sneaking. But, okay, Saruman has been crippled down. Lourdes is running for his life. He is still level 4. Freezing Rain is active, so that means leadership is, you know, not, not meaningful at this point anyway. Looks like the Saruman wants to go inside the jeans. Fireball into the Ballista, which was already taken down. It's a waste, in my opinion. Fireball back from the other Saruman. And this Saruman is going to be definitely taken down. But also, this one has been crippled down. I mean, deja vu, because we have seen the same situation almost in the previous fight. You know what I would love to see? Those explosive mines hiding and sneaking in, you know what I'm saying? Now this Isengard play is down a lot. He has to revive, of course, the Saruman, who is still only level 5. The Ballistas are getting taken down. Cloud breaking! Cloud breaking from Gondor player Jet Joan. And he's actually now, and that's the thing, you know, when you attack one player, there is no guarantee that you might not get attacked at the same time. Now we have Trebuchet, and look at this. You see the damage? And the Zeta is going down, my dude. And my task. There, we come, there comes the task manager. <laughs> AKA Gandalf the Might. Alright. Oh my goodness. Zeta is down. And the trebuchet. Steal them. Steal them. Steal them. Nice. Fight for me. And I will hold your oath fulfilled. What say you? Nice dodge. If those trebuchet would hit, would hit a Saruman, he would be dead. Elvin Woods. Lourdes is kind of almost level 5. You see. You see. You see. That's the power of Trebuchet, my dude. So many power points are getting unlocked now for Gondor. He's only seven power points away. But you see, as those Trebuchets are hitting like an absolute truck, the power points are rising to the sky. But Isengard has to take them down. Otherwise, he will be losing the base. Now, the base is in a safe spot. He was finally, I mean, luckily able to save Saruman. But what happened pretty much now is the Gondor player, Jet Joan, was actually able unwillingly and unknowingly, I don't even know, I don't even know if this is English, by the way, to save this Isengard player. Because this Isengard was almost destroying this Isengard player fully. Remember, Saruman was down. He had the upper hand. He had a huge advantage. But he had to retreat. Since he was under attack. Now there comes Gandalf. He knows Easterlite almost one-shots him. And he knows that Lourdes is dead. Why? Because he killed him. But look at this. You have no power here, Gandalf. Are you sure about that? No. Level 8, almost level 9. And Gandalf will get in safety. And level 10, I don't even need to tell you guys, uh, is a massive power spike for Gandalf. As he will be unlocking the Vort of Power to unleash the inner beast. To get to the maximum power level ev you know, any wizard ever got in Middle-earth. To kill all the surrounding enemy units. Zeisinger play is just making a move now. You remember this scene when Saruman... And Warm Tongue were actually in Isengard, talking about invading and actually attacking Helm's Deep. And Warm Tongue is like, But my lord, there is no such force. And then Saruman goes out, you see the Isengard army underneath them. Holy moly, that's the Isengard army, by the way. That's the Isengard army we have seen in the films. Unfortunately, the one we have seen in the films was not even able to defeat Rohan. Okay, big fights now. You see, you see, you see, oh my goodness. Oh, he could have killed him, by the way, with the spear throw. But he was not paying attention. Oh, 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 the spear throw from downtown. Eomer, the wizard slayer, my dude. Nice. Holy quackamole. I'm telling you, Gandalf can't approach them. Can there is no way. If the second you approach them, he can just cast and use the glorious charge. But look at this now. In the meantime, we have a massive fight going on at the bottom left side of the map. Ballistas, now is the revenge from Amateur Hour. Saruman has been taken down from Gandalf, remember? So it's a perfect window for Amateur Hour, the green Isengard player at the bottom right side, to punish the other Isengard player. The Zeta has been taken down now twice. First, it was taken down by the Gondor player, now from the enemy Isengard player. The power points are rising to the sky. We are still 10 power points away for Amateur Hour to unlock the Balrog. But you see, the power points are rising in those kind of battles. Because Isengard as a faction, or evil factions generally, but especially Isengard, they are able to generate power points as they are losing heroes and units. 
that's why also if you are wondering why do i need 20 for balrog and only 10 for army of the dead that's the reason why good factions when you lose gandalf you don't get any power points but when you lose saruman as isengard you get almost more power points than the player who was killing your gandalf so power points power points power points but in the meantime he's actually going back uh, looks like this Isengard player will be able to defend himself with the help, of course, from the other Gonzo player with the Trebuchet. This game isn't over yet. And Hydro, by the way, this <laughs> he's only two power points away, from my dude. He's two power points only away from getting the Balrog summon unlocked. The Balrog of Morgoth. Durin's Bean. And then he can summon them, or summon him, rather, and kill either the Rohan or the Gondor. Fully. And Gandalf is that, of course, has a really long revive time. So you need to invest lots of time. You need to be patient. We have also Aragorn, Araton's son, King Elessar, with the Anduril Sword. When you see the blue animation, you know that he has Anduril Sword purchased. That makes him to the tankiest hero in the entire game in combination with the Bleedmaster. So basically, Anduril Sword and Bleedmaster, there is nothing tankier than you. Not even Balrog is as tanky as you. No joke. No kidding. More Balistas are coming. How much does Rohan need actually for our... Oh, he's still far away. Like he needs like two power points for the, for the end summon. Or three for the Cloud Break. And then ten power points after that for the army after that. So, but again, we have a stage of the game in which this can literally happen in one single battle. The problem is those trebuchet are super annoying. And look at that. They just snipe down Elmer. Like so many of them. The problem is also that they only cost you 5 command points. It means you can spam them a lot. 150 command points, dude, you can make like a full army of trebuchet. Which is extremely annoying to play against. And for that reason, this Gondor, look at that. Jet Joan is only less than a quarter power points away from getting the army of the dead unlocked. Is he actually going to target the Rohan? He could. And by the way, the second... Um, the Rohirrim are arriving to kill those trebuchet. He can just Let's use the army of the dead and combine that eventually with the cloud breaking because the cloud break reduces their movement speed too. And power points collected. Army of the dead is available. And Hydro needs only one power point for his own Balrog summon. Now Amateur Hour is making a move. Ballistas, he's playing extremely patient, extremely slow. Because he knows one single mistake and I might lose the game. The problem with the Isengard combos is they take, they take so much command points from you. Like every single one of these is going to take 70. So, uh, actually 50, sorry. 50 command points. And you have only 300 command points. That means you can only make 6 combos in total. And you should also ideally leave at least 1 or 2 combos inside your castle. Just in case somebody might attack you as you are trying to attack somebody else. So, Hydro, one power point. Saruman has been crippled down, but do you have the force, what it takes and what it needs to take down this wizard? That's the big question. In the meantime, I, would, I don't want to miss the army of the dead. Or oh, I missed the army of the dead. I believe he killed almost all Rohan? Question mark? He was summoning army of the dead here. Rohan has still units, by the way. He didn't lose his Theorin. But looks like he was losing his Aragorn and also his Legolas. Elmi is back in the business. The trebuchet are going down and looks like the army of the dead was kind of wasted. Now, Amateur Hour needs like 3 power points. And the Balrog of Morgoth being sub special summoned defensively to kill the enemy combos. Saruman has been taken down. And that, by the way, losing Saruman, remember what I was saying, gives also so much power points. Do so you see that? All of a sudden, boom, he has also now 20 power points collected. Now we might see not one, but two Balrogs on the field at the same time. However, he's using the vision of Palantir. He actually wants to use it eventually somewhere else. No, he's using it behind. So, two Balrogs at the very same time. This one is from the Green Isengard player. They are now flying, fly, Balrog, fly. They are trying to reach each other's base. But, of course, this Balrog will deal a bit more damage. Because he was spawned offensively, while the other one was spawned defensively. Now, by the time he arrives here, he has almost no more time left in Middle-earth. And he has to say goodbye to the Fellowship soonish. Saruman has, has been taken down, Lourdes has been taken down, but same also for the other player. Great amount of damage. He might be even able to finish off this castle entirely, which would defeat Hydro. Rohan, in the meantime, lost actually a couple of parts of the Vol. But yes, Theorin and Eomir alive. And reviving Legolas instead of Aragorn first is a big mistake. You want to always revive Aragorn first, because Aragorn offers you leadership, which is essential 
and crucial for your army. Okay, so the next dude, when you see that, I mean, you by the way, even if you don't see that, you will always hear the arm, uh, the Balrog Salmon. Like when you, for example, is Rohan, you will always hear the animation of Balrog Salmon. Hydra has been defeated, by the way, to the Balrog. That's very unfortunate. And the golden rule in free for all matches is that you are not allowed to capture a second castle. That's not allowed. Okay, it's like a gentleman's agreement kind of thing. But what I'm trying to say is like the second you hear Balrogs, two of them, and you know that Condor is already army after that, then you gotta make a move. There is nothing to lose anymore. Because the more you, you know, linger, the more time you waste, the more, the more likely you will end up losing because you are not having the power spike of getting the ultimate summon from your spellbook yet, unlike your opponents, you know? Rohan still needs um, like over three power points for that. And also, that's one of the few matchups I would recommend you to get the Cloud Breaking instead of the End Summon. End Summon against Gondor with Trebuchet or against Isengard with Kombus is not going to be the best choice. While Cloud Break could slow them down, would give you the chance and potential to catch the enemy Gondor Knights and to fish this way a bit more power points. But on the other side, Cloud Break is going to delay your army after that by one power point too. So we also gotta keep this in mind. Fight for Rohan. Okay, level 8 Legolas has Aerovind. Aragorn is level 7. Again, those heroes Aragorn and Gandalf, they have like the game-changing and game-winning abilities. The one is able to summon the army after that. The other one is able to use the Wards of Power for killing everything around him. So basically, you want to go inside with Gandalf, inside the enemy lines. And you want to make sure that you have heal though, because if you underestimate the enemy enemy's damage, by the time you want to get into the range you might end up losing Gandalf before you even get the chance to use the Ward of Power. So, I believe the Gondor player is just playing it slow now. He just waits for the reload timer of his army after that. And this Isengard player is fighting for the map control, getting every single settlement he can, just to make sure that he has always the money he needs to rebuild multiple armies if needed. And that's, by the way, very important. The biggest tip and advice I can give to you guys when it comes to improve your own gameplay in Battle for Middle Earth 1 or any RTS game really, is the amount of map control you will have. That's the key. Like, even if you have like a bad game going on, if you lose like battles and fights, the moment that you lose the map control, you have no recovery anymore. So you can lose army, but if you have sustaining economy, you can always rebuild the army and make another one. You can build like two, three Uruk pits, two, three stables. You will have the money to keep going. But the second you kind of don't care about the map control anymore, it might make you lose the game. You have level 10 Gondor Knights now everywhere. Level 10 Rohirrim as well. You need some Rohirrim Archers though. Rohirrim Archers are one of the greatest counters to the heroes. So if you want to take down the enemy heroes, better get these on the field. Eomir, the Horse Lord of Rohan. Almost level 10. And also Rohan has to fight a little bit more for the map control. There is Lords. Be careful Eomir. Oh no, <laughs> that's bad. I mean, can he take him down though? Looks like, no, I don't think so. He needs army for that. But I, I believe Rohan doesn't want to let him die. However, the Freezing Rain is almost back up. Look at this momentum, like the, the situation right now in which we are in. The Balrog Summon is available. And the army of the dead is available. Now, let me tell you that much. Rohan has a very strong army, right? So Rohan can get in one single battle the army of the dead unlocked. No question about that, right? As he's only like three power points away. Like one beautiful trample with the glorious charge, and boom, you get there. That means literally right now, every one of these three players is able to win the game. So Balrog summon, and now Ar Gondor has to use Army of the Dead defensively. If he wants to be able to defend this Balrog, you need to use Army of the Dead. Raphael is coming in clutch, hitting four structures. Five is the ideal number, but four is more than enough. And if you don't use it, if you don't use army after that, you will lose. Why is he waiting? Why, what is he doing? I don't get it. There is a Rohan army. He is desperately trying to fish the power points. I don't know why. Is he trying to go for a base trade or something? Because he's going to lose the base, right? Or maybe not. I don't know. I mean, maybe he's confident that this Balrog is not going to be able to finish off the castle. We will see about that. Redfire. Yeah, <laughs> he's defeated. Imagine losing the game when you have army of the dead ready, which you could use to defend yourself. 
Oh, that's unbelievable. Now Rohan has to make a move. Rohan, in the meantime, was actually able to get almost every single settlement in on the map Mirfus. But you are you need Army of the Dead. Now you know Baldrock is on cooldown. Now you know the Gondor has been defeated. Now is for you the time to shine. Now make something happen. However, Freezing Rain is of course a great counter to the Rohan. And let me tell you please guys in the comment section down below. Why this Gondor? What do you think? Why this Gondor decided to not use Army of the Dead? Did he really hope that Balrog is not going to be able? That's like worse than gambling. Like no kidding man. Like don't risk it. Especially when you are so close to win the match. Because free for all games they last normally quite a long time. And imagine you have the upper hand, you have the lead, and you end up losing just because life of like a bad decision. You know what I'm saying? Saruman, Lourdes, they have pikemen now to counter the, the trample from the glorious charged Rohirrim. They are almost invincible, but they do still take some damage, especially when they are losing the bonuses they get from the uh, from the heroes like Elmia and Tyrion and Aragorn because of the freezing rain. Does Rohan have Elvin Wood? Yes. For death and glory. Use Elvin Wood. You gotta use Elvin Wood, dude. Please. Why is he not using Elvin Wood? Use the Elvin Wood. Glorious charge. He actually stole them. Oh my goodness, Fiesta. He didn't go for a trample. He didn't use the Elvin Wood for nullifying enemy leadership bonuses while Reen was active. But Saruman has been taken on. Now he has the power points for Army of the Dead. Look, look at this. Like, Lourdes can't do anything against Aragorn. Let me tell you that much. Aragorn is hitting like a truck. Kill Lords, kill Lords, kill Lords. Oh, but Legolas was able to hog strike him. Rohan will be able to still win this fight, by the way. I don't know even how this was possible with the freezing rain, with the fact that Saruman was able to kill this, to steal the entire backline. It has been used, and now he has army of the dead. Now he got he needs to make something happen. Now basically what you gotta do is summon ants, because ants are almost invincible against normal arrows. That means Isengard will need fire or ballistas to be able to take down the ants and then you can make sure that the ants are tanking all these level 3 furnaces, towers and so on then you can go with the Rohirrim inside the jeans but make sure to summon the ants Aragorn is tanky but now the furnaces are also hitting very very hard and you have your uh, you know blade master on cooldown and also heal on cooldown so if only Atelas you gotta watch out but why is he not summoning stuff? that's what I wanna know why is he not summoning stuff? Like, he's kind of, you know, setting a rally point behind the base. Maybe he's afraid of a Balrog summon or whatever. Maybe he wants to use the AOZ to counter the Balrog. Maybe that's what he's planning to do, you know. Maybe it's like, okay, I can maybe win this game without using Army of the Dead. However, I might need Army of the Dead to defend myself against the Balrog summon. But little does he know, Ar you know, Balrog is still, like, over a minute away. And he could have taken down his base. And with the end, he could have finally made something happen. The Siege works will be taken down. Nice commitment. Just summon the ends already, dude. Okay. Oh, now you see the damage. The crossfire from every single furnace, every single tower. Even level 10, Rohirrim can't withstand that for a long duration. Oh, but he was able to sneak one combo inside the castle. That's what it is. This combo, I don't know where this combo is coming from. He was able to sneak in and destroy the citadel. Dealing a great amount of damage and waiting now for the Balrog summon. Oh, this can be Fiesta. The Balrog summon will be used, but Rohan has Army of the Dead. Will he use the Army of the Dead unlike the Gondor defensively? He has to if he wants to be able to defend himself. I mean, these players, they're holding them. And finally, this is the right call. Just use it and try to kill Balrog ASAP. The Balrog is going to ignore them, which is the right call, by the way, and go for the economical and structural damage. So what he did now is destroy the citadel, that means Rohan has no chance of re buying or replacing any of these structures and destroying the level, look the arrow volley, I mean arrow volley is not magical damage or magical, actually deals great amount of damage but also it might be Ar Aragorn on the other side, Aragorn and Aragorn is level 10, no way, now Aragorn is a small army of the dead, dude that's not, what? Aragorn the Balrog Slayer. Now he has everything unlocked, but yet he is not using it. Use ends. Don't waste it. Just use it. This Isengard in the meantime is reviving his Lourdes. But Saruman, he didn't even revive Saruman. Looks like he has not that much money. Because if you take a look into the minimap, as you can see and tell, like Rohan has every single settlement. It means even though he was being damaged big time, 
He has still more than enough money. Look at that. Plus over 13,000 to replace everything that he lost. And this Aragon is just going inside. Listen to this now. I mean, I'm Aragorn, Araton's son. Fight for me. And I will hold your oaths fulfilled. What say you? And yeah, free for all games. And we can also name them later on or you know, from this moment on Fiesta for all games in our channel. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys, guys want to see more Fiesta for all games in the future on this channel. And also quick information, guys. We are working currently on a new BFME 1 patch, which is looking really promising. So stay tuned for future uploads and updates. I will, of course, keep you guys updated the, the second we are having like a patch, um, you know, switcher. You will also get the chance to test the patch for yourself. But I believe the Isengard player now should be defeated, right? Arrow went. Aragorn is taking some damage, but yes, I tell us, he has, he has Bleed Master. Bleed Master now will also make him more beefy and tanky. I tell us, will heal him up around a quarter of his HP. And again, Aragorn is a tanky hero. Boom, sustain. What can you do? And I'm telling you guys, Aragorn is just busted. Rohan's mobility is busted. And this Isengard almost did it, but close is not close enough. Amateur Hour has been defeated, and the victorious player is the green Rohan player. I gotta be honest, I didn't see that coming because he was the last one. Like, everybody got Balrog and AOD beside Rohan, you know? He was the very last one who was getting it unlocked. But, you know, never surrender, never give up. That's the lesson of, today, uh, of today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video and also subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you tomorrow, guys. Until then, keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.